what is the what is the philosophical theory that allows you kind of to dabble and to have a little bit of everything and to avoid really at all costs, you know, consistency and, 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 and principle? Well, ultimately, it is pragmatism. What really drives most Americans uh, ideologically is some form of pragmatism. Uh, pragmatism is this notion you do what works. You, you don't really hold any principle consistently. Um, you, you might have ideals and ideas which you practice sometimes when it's convenient, when it doesn't hurt too much, uh, and you... you uh, you don't think too much about the long-term, long-term consequences. Who knows what they're going to be? How do you even tell? What do you do with them? Um, so, so your focus is primarily on, on the short term, and, and you, you avoid principle, and you avoid pain and to the extent that you can. And you dabble with your altruism. You do a little bit of it here and there, and, but, but you don't want to do too much, and you don't want to engage in too much, and you convince yourself that it's somehow good, and you maybe even convince yourself that you enjoy it. What really works on Americans is, and, 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 and James Galbraith, from an economic political perspective, and James Galbraith plays on this really, really well, I think. And, and so do almost everybody except for the, for the you know, far out socialists or leftists. Is this notion that life's pretty good. You're on, what are you complaining about? Why do we need to engage in this radical experiment of, of capitalism, of, of, of freedom, of, of you know, getting rid of the welfare state and Social Security and Medicare and getting rid of regulation? I mean, that sounds really risky, and, 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 and who knows what will happen? We can't actually tell. We, we, we can't actually figure out what will happen. I mean, a lot of it, as, as James Galbraith said during the debate, a lot of it sounds very appealing. Uh, it, it sounds very appealing. It's... it's uh, uh, yeah, freedom and, and liberty and technology and, and progress, well, we're all for that, and economic growth, we're all for that. But, but you know, don't we kind of get that anyway? I mean, isn't it, don't we get that in a mixed economy? And yeah, we can make the mixed economy a lot better, and we can get rid of bad regulations and keep the good ones, and we could we could make redistribution more effective and more efficient, and, and so on. But, but do we really want to a, a, a test whether people can survive in laissez-faire capitalism without any redistribution? Do we really want to test? Do we really want to test uh, whether businesses are not going to kill us if we deregulate? We can't tell, of course, what exactly will happen because, remember, there are no principles. And, and yeah, sure, government uses force to redistribute wealth. Yeah, sure, government uses force to regulate, but... Okay, so there's a little bit of force. Why is that such a bad thing? If, if the outcome is pretty good, you know, no, it's not ideal. And, 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 and life is, you know, what's wrong? You know, entrepreneurs, you get an iPhone, you, progress is happening, life is getting better. Most of you in the audience, pretty, pretty good. Life is pretty good, pretty happy. And, and in, with this crowd on Thursday, you know, this, is a, this was a pretty uh, a well-off crowd, if you will. So... What they, what they present is, a, is an anti-idealistic, pragmatic, a little cynical view of the world. And it resonates. It resonates because people are generally, most people are comfortable. And most people have given up on idealism. And most people don't believe in principles to begin with. And particularly if you're speaking to an older audience... Principles sound, they, they sound kind of cool, but they sound dangerous. You know, they respond very positively to my passionate, principled argument, but would they actually embrace it? No. Too, too risky. Too dangerous. Too uncertain. And again, life is pretty good. I mean, I keep telling you guys, and, and I know most of you don't believe me, that life is pretty good, even in this world. I mean, life expectancy is increasing. We, we're getting cures for for various cancers, 
we, we keep getting these amazing technologies, money, people keep making money and some people make a lot of money and live really, really well. And yeah, there are problems, there's, there's, there's a lot of poverty, but, but even the poverty with redistribution of wealth, not that much poverty in America. So, so we've kind of cured that. And yeah, people are kind of unhappy, but who can be happy? Happiness, happiness is very difficult to attain. Um, and, you know, Amir says people are not ready to suffer for ideas. But, but the point is that not people are not ready to suffer for ideas because the ideas I present are not ideas for which people will suffer. People are not willing to take risk for their ideas. And because you could argue life is pretty comfortable today, to, to move towards the lives of capitalism is risky from their perspective. It's a change. And yeah, you know, they're pissed off at, 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 uh, at woke. And, uh, you know, if you're conservative and, the, the, you know, the, the left is pissed off at inequality. And even the right views inequality as a little problematic because it creates social unrest and maybe inequality led to the election of Trump and maybe inequality you know, has led to woke and maybe inequality is, 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 this is what they're being told. So they don't know because, again, they don't have any principle to latch onto. They don't have any ideas that they can hook onto and, and, and try to understand the world so they don't really understand it. So it's just moment, moment or year to year. And, 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 and again, they, 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 they want a, a better Republican candidate or the, the, the anti the left. Most, most of the people in the audience, I think, on Thursday were conservatives. They, they want to... But, Leslie Fair Capital, ooh, ooh, that, that's a little scary. That's a little problematic. So I, I, I think the problem in America, and, and, and this is a problem that is, um, um, you know, the, 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 this is a problem that is really inculcated into the, into the minds of people when they're very young, is the problem of, of pragmatism, is the problem of not really believing in principles, and, and, and the reason not to believe in principles, and they have a good reason, I think, not to believe in principles, is that, uh, is that, um, is that most principles, is that most principles are bad principles. If you're raised with the, with the idea, the principle of, let's say, uh, altruism that says uh, you should sacrifice, you should give up the things that you value, you should live for other people, your life doesn't matter, your happiness doesn't matter, they are not essential. And, and, and you have uh, even a shred of self-esteem. You don't want to live that life. You don't want to be like that. So you say to help with principles, I'm going to be a pragmatist. And almost all businessmen in America today are to some extent pragmatist. Almost none of them idealistic of either left or right. I mean, even when they cater to the left or woke or whatever, they cater to the left because they think it's what they need to do in order to, in order to keep their business float, in order to get more customers, in, terms of in, in order to, to appeal to the, to the cultural elites, if you will. But it's not out of principle. It's not because they truly believe and this is, this is the way the world should be. There's almost none of that. It, it really is just a just just kind of pragmatism. Okay, now we're woke. We'll do woke for a few years, and something else will come about later, and we'll do that. It, it's there's very little conviction, I think, particularly among businessmen, but I think in Americans generally. And and this is why I think this is part of what appeals in somebody like like Trump or, or is the is the lack of principle. It's 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 the, the pragmatism, you know. I'm not here to tell you we're going to be more capitalist. I'm not here to be more free markets. I'm not here to, I don't know, quote you the founding fathers. I'm here to try to make things work. We've got these problems and we need to solve them and I, I can solve them and I know how to make things work. And that's what our focus needs to be. It, 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 it's... You know, pragmatism and the arguments for pragmatism, I think, ultimately, in the context of altruism, because there is no alternative, I think, ultimately, are the most effective arguments for statism. And, and, and that pragmatism basically, again, indicates that, look, still getting economic growth and, and things are good. And, you know, if, if, you go to, if, you, if you're smart and 
you 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 know you you invest and you really you know you 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 really try hard and you work hard and and you become an entrepreneur and you're willing to take risks you can be successful in this world what, you know again why why change why 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 go for something that could upend everything and and that's what that's what somebody like James Galbraith will tell you god you want that you know, people are going to die of food poisoning. You want that? Elevators are going to drop from the sky. You want that? You remember that building in Miami it collapsed because of no regulations? Or because, uh, you know, imagine if there were really no regulations, all these buildings would collapse. Do you really want that? That sounds risky. And I can say, no, no, no. Here are the ways in which the market would regulate these things. But that sounds kind of science fiction. And nobody's tried that before. And, um, and, and, you know, that sounds like an argument uh, from principle. And principles, principles don't work. Principles don't work. So it's very hard to convince an audience that has been trained on pragmatism. Again, pragmatism is this idea of do what works in the short run, avoid principles, and avoid thinking too much about the long run. Because there's no way, in reality, practically, there's no way to think about the long run without thinking in principle. Because the long run involves too many variables, too many parameters. You cannot predict the long run without principle thinking. And yet, our educational system teaches kids not to think principally. Our culture teaches kids not to think principally. And when they encounter principles... You guys there? One, two, three. That's still there. Um, let me know in the chat if you guys are still there and if we're still running. All right. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully you are. I'm back. Okay. I went away and I'm back. So what they always say is, look, yeah, there are problems today. There, there's, you know, there's the real issues and and. Uh, um, and if, you're, if, if they're conservative, then what they say is, yeah, they harken back to, to the 1950s. In those days, we had, we had uh, a much better culture. We had families. We had, you know, there was none of this LBGTQ stuff. And so, so there's a nostalgia to the past that is associated with a culture, uh, a, an amazing culture um, of the past. Um, you know, and, and, and they say, oh, yes, can't we... Can we resurrect that? And of course, the, the conservatives are focused on culture. So, so that is their focus. It's, it's a hearkening back to the 50s and the beautiful culture of the 1950s. And, you know, when women were women and men were men and families were families. And there was none of this gay stuff going on. And then, um, and then the liberals hearken back to the past. Right? And um, when they hearken back to the past, they hearken back to to the 50s, when we had high tax rates and lots of regulations and big unions and powerful unions and the unions controlled things and wages went up and wasn't that a beautiful thing? And, and, and there was bipartisanship, both conservatives and Democrats, bipartisanship. And, and we got things done and the government built a highway system and we went to the moon and isn't it amazing? And, and we could, you know, so what we need is to, is to resurrect that to both a nostalgic to a kind of a, a, a past, a statist, uh, culturally, I'd say, square, uh, uh, limiting, collectivist uh, uh, past. And the nostalgic, nostalgic also to the Cold War, there was an enemy, we knew who the enemy was, we were all united around having an enemy. This is why I think they're trying to recreate a Cold War right now. You know, to have one enemy that they can all rally around. Um, now they're, 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 they're trying to make it, and China's helping, they're trying to make it China, and China's, of course, assisting in, in uh, turning itself into a, a, in turning this into a real Cold War. But, they, they, but this nostalgia thing is amazing. And, and how many times did, did James Goldberg, oh, once when the unions were strong and once when Congress was functional and Congress isn't functional anymore and we got stuff done and there was bipartisanship and we could, we could get stuff done again. And 
no principles. No, we just need to tinker, tinker with the system. We'll make it better if we elect this or elect, elect that guy. If we, we just reshuffle the politics a little bit and we get the Supreme Court to do this or that, then we can get and everything's, everything's, everything's great. And this is the consequence of pragmatism. They, they, again, they can't think in principle. They can't think, and he, he's not a socialist. He's not a communist. He doesn't want that. He wants the mixed economy. And I think the, the strongest argument for, in a, in a pragmatic world, in a world where people are, are, are basically pragmatists, the best argument for statism is mixed economy and the fact that it seems to work. And there's a way in which, until it collapses, maybe we can't convince adults. This is why, by the way, I think our focus should be on young people because young people are not yet given up on idealism. Young people, I think, are still open to the idea of idealism, still view idealism as a, as a potential. Uh, and, and what we need to convince them of is to abandon the idealism of socialism, the idealism of the left, the idealism even of communism, and embrace a, a, an idealism of liberty, an idealism of freedom. But once people reach a certain age and they've given up, once they give up on idealism, once they give up on principles, once they give up on some vision for the future, once they give up on being willing to take a risk about the future, about change, it's, it's over. It's finished. It's hard to convince them. And this is one sense in which there's a sense in which it's harder to convince conservatives than, than I think, uh, you know, certainly uh, left of center people. And that is because conservatives at that point, have bought into conserving. The best we can do is not embrace too radical of a change. The best we can do is to conserve, is to look for the past, is to bring back the 50s. And I think, you know, a lot of the left are conservative in the sense that James Goldberg wants to conserve, wants to go back to the 50s as well, a different variation of the 50s. What we need to capture are the young people who are interested in change, who are interested in making the world a better place, who, are, who believe that making the world a better place, changing, you know, and, and, and taking risks for that change is a, is a worthwhile goal, but who are open to challenging altruism. See, it's all driven by altruism, right? Why do we become pragmatists? Why do people become pragmatists? They become pragmatists because altruism is not viable. They become pragmatists because altruism is anti-life. They become pragmatists because altruism is, is anti-happiness and anti-America. Anti but so they abandon it and they abandon principles with it, but they don't abandon altruism completely. They abandon it as a system of principle. They still hold it as a moral ideal. They just don't think a moral ideal can be achieved. And therefore, it tugs at their heartstrings. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.